Hey, what's up everyone? Johnny the Geek here, and today I'm going to be showing you some of my favorite rooted apps, as well as uh, downloading a couple of custom ROMs and uh, backing up your original ROM in case you mess things up. And so, uh, first things first, for the rooted apps, you got to make sure that uh, you download and update uh, Super User. And uh, even though you root your phone, um, you're still going to want to download uh, and update the uh, Super User app and the Super User Update Fixer. So once you got those two going, uh, when you start it up, um, you're going to go to the uh, Preference. And then down at the bottom, you'll go to the SU Binary. It's going to check for an update. I have the update already, but I'm going to go ahead and update it anyways. So uh, once it downloads and updates, everything's all good. Um, you can go ahead and exit out of that, and that's pretty much it. Um, in here, you can also, this is where you would be managing um, the apps uh, that request super user abilities or super user request. So uh, these programs right here are accessing system files, and uh, uh, this is where you would manage or allow or deny access. Uh, and it's good to have because uh, you want to know what programs are are accessing those uh, those uh, root operating system files, right? So uh, next, um, I'll be talking about the uh, Quick Boot, and this is for those of you who aren't going to be using uh, RAW Manager or uh, CW uh, Clockwork Mod Recovery. Um, and if you want a quick and easy way of uh, booting into recovery mode or just rebooting the phone, this is a fast and easy way to do that, All right? And uh, it's a free app as well. So next is the uh, root call blocker. And so what this does is that this actually will uh, block calls at the system level. So you don't even see or hear or get notified of any calls um, that's on the blo uh, block list. And so uh, what you do is uh, you go to profiles here, right? And then um, uh, the, there's a default profile, but you can make more uh, if you want. And uh, in this default profile, there's a blacklist set up. So in here, uh, and I've created one, just a fake one, just for uh, demonstration purposes. And uh, what you can do is you can click on add. You can add from your contacts or you can um, add from a call log. Like if you just received some call, and uh, you can choose... Um, that option there to block a number or you can enter a, uh, a number manually or you can just say any private number oh I guess that's only for uh, pro versions which by the way this app is a, a trial version so it's uh, feature limited so uh, yeah so you can enter in your own number and you just type in the number there as well as the name um, and it will uh, give you these options to put on the blacklist here. So uh, right here um, on the phone icon, uh, the default block action is going to be uh, just to reject the call. But you can choose any other method that you want here. And then uh, for text messages, same thing. You can block, block and save, which uh, it will block it, but it also tell you uh, keep a log of what it's blocked, right? Um, so yeah, that's pretty much a, a simple program uh, that's really great for any of those any of those uh, who want to block uh, phone calls, right? So the next app is going to be the Samba file sharing, and I really like this app. And uh, when you um, run this app, it basically creates kind of a server or lets you access the files that's on your phone wirelessly from your laptop or desktop computer whichever other computer that's on the same network so um, this particular phone's IP address on this wireless network that I'm on is uh, 192.168.1.106 and so when I punch that in to my computer my desktop uh, either on um, on the Mac OS X you just go to server and you connect to server and you type that in with these slashes here uh, or on a Windows machine you go to the little uh, bottom left icon the little orb uh, the start icon you click on that and then the uh, run box you just type in um, that IP address or slash slash Android and then when you type that in it's gonna ask you for username and password and to uh, specify the username and password you bring up the menu here you go to settings and uh, here's where you would uh, enter in your own password so uh, 
you just type that in. Uh, the username is SD card that's default, but you can make it whatever it is you want. So uh, you make us uh, your username and password, and uh, you can leave all of this, all of these settings uh, alone. But you have your choice of uh, doing some uh, detailed kind of settings here. So uh, when you type in the username and password, you're going to then see the files that's on your phone, and uh, then you can access. You can drag and drop, uh, take files off your phone, or um, copy files to your phone and uh, there are a lot of proprietary softwares that usually come with the manufacturer of the phone like Motorola makes their own kind of uh, application where you can do this sort of thing I don't know if you can access it wirelessly though you might have to actually plug in through USB which is kind of a drag sometimes but um, this makes it much more simple you don't have to install any programs onto your desktop you just use something that's already built into your desktop um, by logging in as if it was a server and uh, this app is uh, free, so uh, it's a really great app to use. Oh, uh, on the Mac OS X, I forgot to mention, you uh, have to type in SMB colon slash slash Android. All right. Um, let's see, let's go back to the next app here. Alright, so the next app is Wi-Fi Tethering. Now, I'm not going to be able to show this uh, particular app uh, on how to set this up because I don't have Wi-Fi service on this phone. But I have another video, uh, which I'll put a link to in, in the description as well as right up here, um, to uh, another video where I talked about this app, how to get this app. Because it's not available on the Android market, um, but you can download it very easily uh, from the Google code. Alright, and so... Um, a little bit about that program I guess I'll talk about it is basically it takes your 3G service your mobile uh, internet that you have on your phone and it turns your phone into a wireless router and it shares that mobile internet that 3G service it shares it uh, with other computers or other uh, devices like a computer a laptop would basically connect to this uh, phone much like your laptop connects to your router uh, at home your wireless network this becomes a wireless router so uh, it's a really great app to have as one of the most popular um, reasons why people root uh, their Android devices. All right, moving on to a more controversial Wi-Fi application, and this is a program called Wi-Fi Kill, also not available on the market uh, Android Marketplace, and uh, it's a little bit difficult to have. Hopefully, I'll have a link for you uh, in the description of where to download this APK and install onto your phone. So uh, what this does basically, it uh, scans um, other wireless devices um, on the network and uh, uh, this particular phone is on a wireless network right now so it's gonna it's looking right now for other wireless devices and once it finds it you'll be able to uh, select and it will actively um, trick the other devices to think that this is the router right so there's a, a few other devices on the network here and uh, once you click on the check boxes what it will do is that it will deny service or drop the packets um, to those devices uh, that those devices are trying to send out to get the internet or whatever it is trying to do on the net wireless network um, those devices will still show that it's connected to the uh, network but it just it'll just look like the internet has stalled and uh, stopped working so um, these are the other two devices that are on a wireless network the same wireless network as this phone right now so I can go ahead and deny them and then um, my let's say my laptop would also be on this list and I would not check the box and then my laptop would get most of the internet so uh, this is for the purpose of um, I don't know IT to check to make sure who's hogging the bandwidth or to deny someone that's hogging the bandwidth or just to check to see if uh, there are any um, uh, loopholes uh, like if there's uh, access point isolation to make sure that your AP isolation is working and stuff like that so uh, you know another uh, very controversial one that uh, can be helpful but it can also be a very um, uh, nefarious use uh, of an app right so uh, be careful with this don't get in trouble and if you do get in trouble don't don't tell people I showed you how to use this alright so uh, on to the next app 
Alright, so the next app I want to show you is the uh, Titanium Backup Program. Now, this is a very popular backup program. There's a free version and there's a paid version. Um, you should be able to just get by okay with the free version. Uh, I don't really know what the uh, differences are, um, but essentially this is great for backing up all of your apps in case uh, you were to lose something um, or uh, you're, you're, you lost all of your apps for some whatever reason and your settings and you want to restore them uh, within the same operating system. Now I've tried this to uh, back up my apps and settings from one ROM and then uh, threw on a custom ROM and try to restore all of the settings. It doesn't work out too well that way when you switch ROMs and try to uh, restore all of your apps and settings. Because the ROMs are different, the settings might be different, so it might not work out okay. But I, if you're going to stay within the same ROM, the same operating system, OS, and everything, um, it's good to have uh, um, as a backup, you know, just in case something happens and you lose everything. Um, so to start a backup, what you do is you go to the backup and restore section. This is everything that uh, your phone could possibly back up. You just uh, go to the menu settings here, and then you're going to go to um, batch, right? And there's, there's a list of commands here that you want to do. You can uh, back up all the user apps only, and there's uh, 14 of them. Back up all the system data. And uh, or you could do both and back up all the user apps and system datas. And so uh, once you click on that, basically uh, what's it going to do now is going to uh, uh, show you what you want to back up, everything that it's going to back up, right? And then also you want to make sure that the kill active apps um, is checked so that uh, it doesn't skip over some app that or some service that's running. Um, so that it, it puts it up in the backup. So once you uh, run this operation, it's going to go ahead and start backing up. And this um, is going to take, you know, depending on how many apps you have and how much stuff you have on your phone, could take you between 5 minutes to 25 minutes. So uh, let this run, and uh, it's going to create a, um, uh, a file for you to back up uh, in a folder. Alright, so the titanium backup process is finished, and so I'm going to show you now where it stores uh, the backup files, and it's in this folder called titanium backup, and this is on the uh, internal memory of the phone. I've uh, gone ahead and already mounted my phone uh, and uh, set it as a USB mass storage device. If you're on a Windows machine, I'm assuming that you've downloaded the... Um, the Windows drivers uh, for Motorola or for whatever phone that you have um, to uh, so that uh, the operating system can pick up the, the device and you can access these files here. So um, if you want you can just uh, copy this folder onto your computer right in case uh, you do something to mess up your phone you can copy it back and uh, if you're really paranoid then just copy uh, every folder in every uh, memory device that you have onto the phone that's mounted. Alright, so uh, pretty much that's it. Uh, now we're going to go back to the phone. And Alright, so next I'm going to show you is ROM Manager and this is a very powerful program in that uh, it allows you to uh, flash uh, the clockwork recovery mode and also install ROMs uh, via the SD card when you put them on the SD card or downloading ROMs from a little kind of a ROM marketplace that they have here um, and also do some other powerful things but uh, first things first is that you want to flash clockwork uh, recovery and so when you click on that it brings up uh, a different various models of your phone and it tries to detect uh, what sort of family uh, of phone that you're you're in and this particular phone is the uh, Motorola Atrix 4G your list may be different depending on what kind of phone that you have but uh, Mine is the uh, Atrix 4G, so I'm going to go ahead and click on that, and now it's going to download, and uh, it should only take a few minutes. Okay, so before we get into putting on custom ROMs, we're going to make a backup of our current ROM in case we screw things up, um, and or also when we want to go back to the original ROM. Um, so first thing you're going to do is... Um, boot into recovery mode. Now the ROM manager does have an option here to back up your current ROM. 
uh, but I like to usually do things uh, in recovery mode because it's much more um, safer or much more stable. There could be different things that might not work out too well and uh, uh, for some reason it might not make a, a backup correctly. So uh, boot into recovery mode here and once we're in recovery mode we're going to scroll down to where it says backup and restore so use the volume keys to um, uh, to navigate up and down and then use your uh, lock button usually it's a lock button to uh, uh, select right and we'll, we'll choose backup here which is the first option and this process usually takes uh, in between I don't know about five to ten minutes all right so now the backup process is complete I'm gonna go ahead and reboot the system now and now I'm gonna plug in my phone into the computer and we're gonna look at the uh, backup file it created okay so my memory card is mounted onto the desktop here and uh, here's the folder that contains my backup and this is the actual content of the backup and so I'm going to go ahead and copy and save this uh, entire folder onto my desktop. And so uh, this is in case I were to do something and I lost all my files on the memory cards. I mean, you can leave this on the memory card, but I'm just going to go ahead and make an uh, archival backup of this. So this is um, in case you were to mess up your uh, ROM or, or you don't like the ROM that you have. You can leave this on there, uh, but I like to have an archival backup of it so that I can restore my original ROM. All right, so we're back to the phone now, and I'm going to go ahead and go into uh, ROM Manager. And uh, what I need to do is uh, first flash the uh, Clockwork Recovery. And so um, your list of phones here will be different if you're not on the Atrix. Um, so choose uh, your model phone, and I'm going to go ahead and choose a Motorola Atrix. So it's uh, now going to download and install a ROM Manager and ask for super user request. And so uh, this is something that you need uh, before you can start downloading ROMs using uh, Clockwork Mod. Now, when you go into download ROM, this is kind of a repository of uh, ROMs. It's not always uh, up to date per se. So uh, these developers here have uploaded their uh, custom ROMs that they've made uh, for this particular phone or that works with this particular phone, the Atrix, right? And if you have a premium account, you can download um, premium uh, ROMs. For example, Cyanogen Mod Nightlies that uh, might work, might not work for this phone. Um, but the one that I have used and I've liked uh, for this particular phone is uh, the Deviance one and uh, particularly the uh, D-Bloat. Uh, so basically it takes away all of the um, Moto Blur uh, bloated software, um, all the crapware that they install, AT&T installs onto this phone. Um, but I'm actually going to just um, keep it on the blurred version. So I'll just click on that. Right, and then there's a few um, um, uh, reviews on it. So I'll just go ahead and click on download. All right, so now it's downloading the ROM, and we'll be back when it's finished. All right, so the download is complete. Uh, now we have the option of uh, backing up the existing ROM. We already done that, and uh, we're gonna wipe the data and cache now. This is going to wipe all the data, the user information, and probably your apps. I think it's best. Uh, to do this because you don't know what your settings, previous settings will, how they will all work or uh, interact with the new ROM. You kind of want to have a clean start anyways. So um, by doing this, uh, you will lose all of the apps and data, um, just something you're going to have to deal with or figure out a way. If you don't want to lose all that, um, then uh, the Titanium Backup uh, should replace all of the the apps but um, the data within the apps and the settings and stuff like that may not work properly um, what else uh, back up your photos um, your messages and 
all the stuff that's on the memory card I've already showed you that how to just drag and drop so now I'm just gonna press OK it's gonna reboot and it's going to install the ROM we just downloaded and so when we come back to it we'll uh, mess around with that ROM alright so it just rebooted and uh, it's finished with the new uh, Deviance uh, ROM and so uh, first thing you want to do even though it comes with uh, super user and titanium backup is uh, go to the Android market and uh, download those two and uh, update them uh, super user and titanium backup All right. so uh, once we have those programs updated I'm gonna go ahead and start up titanium backup and it's gonna ask for super user uh, permissions and so once that's OK, just click on OK here, go through the change log, it's pretty much standard stuff. And we're going to restore, oh come on. Right, so we hit the uh, menu button here and go to batch. And then we're going to restore. And we already have the titanium backup uh, that we made previously already on the phone. But in case it was deleted, just go ahead and copy it back onto um, the, uh, uh, the memory card or the internal memory uh, where that uh, titanium backup folder is. So um, let's see. Let's just replace uh, the missing app with data and uh, so these are the just the apps and the the data within those apps and there's only 13 you're probably gonna have a whole lot more um, so these are the only apps here or you can do app only without the data so uh, let's just do app only Go ahead and run. Alright, so what it's doing is that it's installing all of these apps. And uh, I guess for the free version, you got to do this manually one by one. But nonetheless, it does make it easier than having to go to uh, all the different places and downloading them. All right, so uh, that's just a brief uh, introduction to the Titanium Backup. As always, do your research, uh, read up more on the features and the procedures for this. Um, it may change with the newer versions of this app uh, when you're watching this video. So uh, And practice. Uh, practice when you first get stuff and uh, make sure that uh, you try this out um, with uh, not too much data to lose. All right, so now I'm going to install a um, custom ROM, but through uh, the recovery mode. Uh, it's a ROM that I've downloaded from the internet. It's Darkie's ROM, um, and uh, I've copied it onto the uh, memory card on this. So I'm going to show you a different way other than uh, the um, uh, ROM manager method. So uh, we go back into ROM manager and then uh, make sure that you flash the clockwork uh, mod recovery for this particular phone or for your particular phone. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and reboot into recovery. And uh, once it does that, we're going to find the um, custom ROM that I had copied onto the, uh, onto the memory card. All right, so once you're here, we're going to uh, install um, zip from SD card, right? And so uh, it's asking uh, where is the zip, and we're going to choose the zip from the SD card, which is uh, the very top. And then here is the uh, dark side uh, 4.4 that I copied onto uh, the uh, memory card. So I'll just scroll down to there and I'll choose that. And then I'll scroll down and choose that. And we'll wait for this to uh, reboot. All right, so the install from the update uh, is complete. And so we're just gonna go ahead and reboot. But before we reboot, and this is important, what you're gonna need to do is wipe 
data factory reset wipe cache partition and also wipe Dalvik cache all right so do all of those and uh, then reboot all right so here we have the dark side ROM installed and uh, you can play around with this just do the same thing I showed you previously uh, with updating or uh, restoring the apps that you've uh, backed up uh, with titanium backup um, so now the last thing I'm going to show you let's say for example you don't like any of this and you want to revert back to your original ROM now I'm going to show you how to go back into your original ROM and to do that we have to reboot in back into recovery and uh, you're going to need ROM manager and reboot back into recovery I'm not going to show you that again because I already showed you uh, just previously just now on the last ROM but uh, reboot back into recovery and then I'm going to show you um, how to uh, restore alright so we're back into recovery and what I'm going to do now is go to backup and restore right and then I'm going to click on restore and then that's the backup that I made earlier uh, That's it's the first one the top one here and then I'm gonna click on that. I'm gonna go down to hit yes on restore. Keep in mind that uh, whatever it is you did in those other ROMs um, is gonna be wiped out. So this is reverting back to the very, very original when you made that backup um, of the ROM and it will wipe out all of the previous ROMs and any of the data and the stuff that's saved in the previous ROMs. All right, so the restore was successful. Um, after it's finished, you uh, reboot the system and you're back onto your original ROM here. Um, and uh, that's pretty much it uh, for this video. But uh, before I go, I got to mention a few things. Uh, first, um, everything that I've done here, the ROMs that I've used and the ROMs that I'm providing the links to is specifically for Gingerbread 2.3 uh, and above. So if you have Froyo 2.2 um, or any other version, don't use the ROMs that I'm providing uh, in the link, right? So those are specifically only for uh, uh, Gingerbread 2.3. Um, that doesn't mean that you can't do this on uh, Froyo 2.2. You can. You can do almost pretty much the same thing. Uh, just uh, don't use those ROMs. Find other ROMs that are made for Froyo 2.2 or whatever uh, ROM manager will let you do because it will basically uh, figure out which ROMs are available or uh, sort it all out for you. Um, and then uh, secondly, make sure that you have a full battery life. Um, don't use this when your battery is almost dying or halfway. Make sure everything that you're doing is is charged up all the way and uh, try to stay charged up as much as possible. And lastly, I'm not responsible for any uh, damages or bricking that you do to your phone. All of this is all in uh, fun and experimenting. Um, always research and uh, find out what's compatible with your phone. Um, if you ask me such and such phone is capable of doing this, I don't know. You're going to have to research it yourself. I'm just doing this because uh, I get a lot of questions as to what uh, what to do when you root it uh, or what kind of ROMs to put on this particular phone, the Motorola Atrix. Um, so I'm just showing you that this, all the stuff that I've done works on this particular phone uh, with these methods that I've picked up on the internet. Um, also this is the uh, Motorola Atrix for AT&T out in the US. I don't know if this works for any other Atrix uh, like the Bell Atrix. I get a lot of, I look at a lot of the warnings uh, from XDA developers saying that um, that uh, it does not work on the Bell Atrix. Uh, other than that I don't know any other um, uh, <clears throat> methods for other Atrixes out there but Again, this is AT&T, and this is uh, Motorola Atrix. All right, so I hope uh, that was helpful and uh, informational for you. And uh, please comment, subscribe, thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever. And uh, thanks for watching.